and this week to learning differences in particular. I'm your host, Avi Dresner. Happy to be here today with Doctor of Education Michael McManman, founder of the College Internship Program, which offers comprehensive college and career programs for young adults with Asperger's, ADHD, and other learning differences. Dr. McManman, welcome to Well Talk. Thanks, Avi, for having me on. And if you want to learn more about Dr. McManman and the College Internship Program, you can click on his picture at welltalkradio.com. So, Dr. McManaman, I'm sure that not all of our listeners out there are familiar with the College Internship Program and the great work that it does. So why don't you review before we delve into more detail? Sure. We've been in leave for, since 1984, almost 28 years. We started off as um, a, a program for young adults in transition from uh, residential programs. We are a college program for Asperger's and LD college students uh, we when you say LD, we're not talking about Mormons, right? So you better... No, not LDS. <laughs> LD. okay. Although they might be LDS. Learning differences. And we'll right. talk about that in a bit. But anyway, continue. Sure. And uh, so we have a comprehensive curriculum that basically works on all the different areas of learning differences that they have to help them do college or careers or also our new uh, phases, uh, visual performing arts. Great. And, uh, you know, at this point we should probably define... Our terms. We've mentioned a few terms already that not everyone out there may know. So can you explain what you mean by learning differences in general? And then just maybe give us some brief working definitions for some of the main ones like autism, Asperger's, and ADHD. Well, sure. Uh, learning differences is a catch-all statement, and it's just more politically correct than learning disability. Because it's just because you're different doesn't mean you have a, uh, you know, your disability. It's just not the, the norm. So uh, it catches everything from reading disabilities to language, uh, writing, all of the areas of uh, learning difference. And dyslexia. Then, uh, right, uh, dyslexia, uh, et cetera. And then ADH and AD, you know, uh, attention deficit. See, I have ADD, which is Avi Dresner disorder. Yeah. I don't know if that's anything to worry about. I think you might have the real thing, too. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. We'll talk off the yeah. air about that. Right. <laughs> and... Uh, and then uh, Asperger's is really on the same spectrum with autism and Asperger's. And our students at our center are more high-functioning Asperger's, I mean autism, or Asperger's, which is on the high end. It doesn't mean anything about IQ. It means um, social ability, mostly. And so our students have a lot of difficulties with uh, executive functioning, which is organizational strategies, um, sensory issues, social, and those are the three main areas, and they impact all of their areas, whether it's independent living, uh, careers, or academics. Got it. Well, you mentioned the spectrum. Obviously, we are talking about a broad spectrum when we talk about autism mm -hmm. and Asperger's. Some people are obviously highly functional and, and probably even brilliant, uh, and some people are practically catatonic. So, you know, I should stress that, that the people that you see in your program are on the higher end of that, that scale, the more, I should say, the more functional and of that scale. And I, I guess when I hear the word autism, I, and I'm sure probably others out there, think of Dustin Hoffman in Rain Man. And, uh, you know, obviously that wasn't a documentary, but I thought perhaps the film would be a useful point of departure or frame of reference that people can relate to. And I'm also curious, as someone, you know, as an expert on autism and Asperger's, how you felt uh, it, that portrayal was. Do you think that that was accurate? Is that, in your experience, what autism, high-functioning autism looks like or no? Uh, it would be yeah, someone sort of right on the edge of high-functioning autism. Um, and that, that's basically what it would be. Our students are, are not that uh, impacted as he was socially. So it would be more on the autism end of it than the Asperger's end of it, the high-functioning Autism. A lot of us can pass very normally until you, you know, cut us or and we bleed and all <laughs> kinds of social dysfunction. So, uh, you know, for myself, that's what sort of happened. I sort of passed for normal, but I hid a lot of my um, uh, differences. And we're going to actually talk about your experience a little bit later on in the show. Uh, for right now, though, if you're just joining us, you're listening to Well Talk, the show about your health, fitness, and wellness. I'm your host, Avi Dresner, and apropos of Rain Man, I'm definitely not wearing my underwear. Uh, and if you don't get the reference, just Google it. 
<laughs> My guest today is Doctor of Education Michael McManman, founder of the College Internship Program, which offers comprehensive college and career programs for young adults with Asperger's, ADHD, and other learning differences. And if you've got a question for him, the number to call here at the station is 413-528-0860. That's 413-528-0860. And you can also email your question to me at avi, A-V-I, at welltalkradio.com. So, Dr. McManman, I made a film reference just now with Rain Man. Now I'm going to make a TV one. You and some of our listeners out there may remember the old commercials for the Hair Club for Men. Uh, If not, I'll explain them. But uh, they showed a slew of before and after pictures of men without them with hair. And then the president of the club, Cy Sperling, comes on and says, I'm not just the Hair Club president, I'm also a member. And you see a picture of him bald, uh, and then a picture of him with a full head of hair. Now, I love those commercials, and I can't help but think about them now, not because of your hair, which looks fabulous, by the way, uh, but, but because you also have Asperger's, as you said, and you grew up in a big family where several others were on the spectrum as well. So I'd like to know if something like the college internship program existed for you when you were growing up, and whether it did or didn't, was your own diagnosis and that of other members of your family what motivated you to dedicate your life to this? Okay, so uh, first of all, that's a statement I say all the time. I say I'm not the hair, just the hair club president. <laughs> I'm the first graduate of the program, you know, and I, I use that in, uh, when I speak. So um, I, uh, let's see, growing up in a family, I have a sister who is high-functioning autism. I have a brother that was Asperger's that was brilliant. Who ended up committing suicide, unfortunately. And then I have a sister, two sisters with ADHD and, um, and others with all kinds of other aspects, which I won't talk about right now. And so uh, I sort of, in my book, I refer to being feeling like I was a psychologist by the time I was eight years old or 10 years old because I was one of the younger ones. And, I, and this is the gift of um, being on the spectrum. You can be high functioning, really high functioning in certain areas and really low in other areas at the same time. So you just picture someone like at MIT, a professor, like, you know, someone like in The Beautiful Mind, the professor right, at Princeton, right. mm-hmm. who actually had Asperger's, not mental illness, as they depicted in the movie. And uh, they can do wonderful things, but then they can't watch their child in the bathtub, you know, and they don't have common sense in, in regular areas. My brother was really brilliant and had just you know, missed the boat on small little stuff with his, the people around him all the time. It was really, and you just, and then the problem is that you look at these people and you expect them to know better because they are so smart in certain areas. You say, well, they're obviously doing this on purpose or they're not, you know, they don't care about you or other people. And it's just not true. It's just the way where our brains are, are packaged. Well, you know, obviously I can relate to what it's like to be brilliant and disturbed at the same time. So, uh, <laughs> but it, it really did. So, so these things are, are definitely genetic, right? I mean, they're right. not environmental or maybe there is some environmental because, you know, you hear this about autism all the time that the rates are off the charts now. And one in X number of boys, I forget the statistic. 44. 44 boys today. I mean, that's... Did this not exist when I was a kid, or has it really increased that much? And if so, why? It, it's not a fad. It's a trend. It's a real trend. It, and yes, yeah, some of it is the diagnosis du jour, in a sense. You know, some of the ADD kids are moving over, but but basically, it, most of it is real a real trend. And I, we don't know what it's about. There's all kinds of research centers. We think it has to do with a combination of um, immunization. Uh, food additives, uh, air pollution, water pollution, our change of diet, which has been radical in the last 20, 30 years. But nothing has been conclusively proven. No, nothing at all. Right. And there are studies, I assume, going on as we speak trying to figure this out. Oh, definitely. And there's no medication, right, for anything, for autism or Asperger's? That mm-hmm. I mean, I know there is for ADHD, for example. No, but what we're, what we're specializing in is coming up with cutting-edge curriculum to look at each area that they're, where they're impact. And here's the deal, it's like everyone speaks English and we speak Chinese. We have to learn to speak English if we want to have a job, a relationship, and a career, and these things in the, in the real world. So 
our students need to learn that they're they're Apple computers in an IBM world. They're, <laughs> they're, they're a minority. They need to. They're not disabled. They're not dysfunctional. They learn differently, and they have to learn. They have to be willing to put the social first to learn what it is to talk to someone like you, talk, look you in the eye, um, let you speak, get perspective on what you're feeling and what you're understanding. They, they just don't just blow by you. It's sort of like Einstein syndrome. You know, they're just impacted by their special interests so deeply that they're not, they're not think, it looks like they're not thinking about you, but they do have feelings, they do care about you, but they don't reciprocate, reciprocate them emotionally and socially the right way. So it, it hurts them on the job and everywhere. Absolutely. And people who don't understand, obviously, misinterpret it as something else. Exactly. Right? So, I mean, the work is for both of us. It's both for the person that has it as well as for the rest of us as a society. Hopefully, things like this show are going to educate people. Right. And even more so when they get impacted by um, the social effect on themselves. When they know that they're different and they know they're not affected about there in the world, they get depression, anxiety, fear. And this makes it worse. Got it. Uh, Michael, it looks like we have a, a question here from a listener that uh, just got handed to me. And uh, if I'm understanding it correctly, it says, how do you understand when instructions for everything are in a foreign language? Uh, and you, know, you mentioned Chinese before. so well, you, Right. Um, basically, you have to be, it's like, you know, when they say you can't teach a student unless you can sit in the chair. Right, sure. Well, it's the same thing with us. I need to do meditation, prayer, yoga. I swam this morning in my pool. I have to do sensory things. I have to make sure I get exercise. I have to eat right. All of those things make me present enough to, to be able to work on my social and uh, organizational other things. If I don't have that going, then I'm not even, a, you can't even talk to me. It's like I'm on drugs or something. Right. You know, I'm not present. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a multi-dimensional approach and you have to do all of those things at once. I've only been doing them for myself for about the last seven or nine years and the impact has been huge in my life. I can hold a relationship and be present. I can, my children know who their dad is and I can talk to them and, and trust me and socially I'm, I'm, I'm fairly um, balanced and emotionally and socially so these things all come into play and you have to be, you have to have self-knowledge is the key. Got it. Well, let's talk about how you do that specifically at the college internship program and talk about your programs in more detail. It seems like you've got two main tracks, an academic one and a career one, and you mentioned a third track before the show, which I think you said was a performing arts one. Right. Uh, so can you describe them, please, and who they're for? Sure. Well, all of our students uh, can come in and go on any of the tracks. So a student might go directly to Ber Berkshire Community College or Elms College, we use Elms College also, and uh, they could be in the academic track, and they would still get aspects of the career track and the performing arts track, but they would their emphasis would be in that area. A career track student would be someone who's either turned off to the academic process, and sometimes they they become academic track because they they're not afraid of it anymore because of a lot of support and tutoring, etc. But they would be working on uh, internships, jobs. We have our own career curriculum they would go through, and then a performing arts, that's our new one starting this for visual performing arts, would use our Spectrum Playhouse, which is the old St. George's Church in Lee, our gallery, our, our studio spaces that we just completed. Was that an intentional pun, Spectrum Playhouse? Or no? well, that... It was. It was a, <laughs> it's a double entendre. Yeah. <laughs> and people get it as, oh, we'll open, you know, a spectrum of light, and we get it as the spectrum. So it's sort of an inside joke for us, right? I wholeheartedly approve. <laughs> so all of these kids have graduated high school, right? I mean, right, they all graduated high school. Now, the, they would typically have been in special education programs in high school or not necessarily? Uh, not necessarily, but some of them have, and some of them were in residential schools. And about half of them have gone to college either from home. Parents try to, the ASPE moms, we call them, try to keep them home and you know, help them as much as possible, but then it breaks down or they don't pass the classes at the college and they need a lot more help and then they, get, you know, they come to us. So about half of them have done college and been unsuccessful and the other ones are coming before college. Unsuccessful in spite of the fact that I'm sure many of them are completely off the charts, brilliant. Right, if you had oral testing, they would pass right out of everything probably. Right. 
you know, especially the areas of special interest? Well, look, there are about a half dozen college internship program centers across the country, if I counted right on your website. And I'm guessing that you get you also get students from all across the country as well. So is being away from family and friends and a support network even more difficult for this group of young adults who obviously usually lack social skills? And assuming that it is more difficult, how do you help them handle that? Well, transitions are hard for any transition at all. I mean, it's really difficult for people on the spectrum, so we have to take account of that. So what parents can do for kids younger than this age group is be introducing new things all the time and just sit their kid down and say, listen, these are the rules. You're going to be getting, we're going to ask you to do new things, try new things all the time. It's so, This is the most important thing you're going to have to do the rest of your life, even when you're on your own. Because the default mode, like a computer of someone on the spectrum, is isolation and to go back into yourself, especially if you've been rejected by, a, you know, on a date or at work or you're losing and people aren't understanding you, you go back into yourself like an autistic person would be sitting there, you know, talking to himself or whatever. It's the same thing on with Asperger's, etc. So the, uh, the thing is to teach that early on. You know that um, take a diff drive a different way to school, even though they want to go this way all the time. Because they're so married to routine. You they mean, are. Like, they're totally like fifteen like minutes to the Fascist <laughs> about it. Right. Like no one can sit in that chair but Chad, you know, or whatever. Right. This is what they do, and they try to rule the world and control it for safety, because they don't know how to handle transition. I, we definitely have to talk after the show yeah. because I, I've got at least three of the things that you mentioned. Yeah. Well, everyone has a little bit of it. That's the thing. You know? and, I, and I know you do. <laughs> Takes one to know one. I can diagnose you know, really quick. <laughs> well, so what other support do students get in terms of mentoring, counseling, or, or therapy? Sure. Right. So there's it's a whole comprehensive curriculum. So they have social mentors who are doc doctoral graduate students who come in and work with them. And our social thinking staff work with them individually and in groups regarding perspective taking, understanding your emotions, etc. They have wellness, which we used to send them to like Berkshire South, no offense to Berkshire South. It's a great place to go, but they would sit in the hot tub or walk to McDonald's, you know. <laughs> um, so we do individual fitness plans and have wellness plans for them, which take into account sleep diets, sensory diets, uh, food, um, you know, the, things, the thing is wellness for life, right? There's things that we do, like I love to swim, I love to garden. These are all things where you can get yourself centrally into things and out of yourself and, and be fit. So they need to learn that for life, not just to go to a health club, and you can't always go to a health club. And so that's one area. There's counseling, there's individual tutorials, study halls, there's uh, residential programming in their apartments that they rent. And they have recreational. It, it's and within that there are lots of subcategories like occupational therapy. So it's pretty comprehensive, and we have levels of support. So a student can come in on a high level where he needs a lot of support. Initially, most students do come in on that level, and it goes down. So the tuition goes down as they go through. It's not a cheap service. The problem that they have in the U.S. and this is politically right now what's going on. You can see it in the. You know, we pay such low taxes, people think we pay high taxes, but compared to Europe where they provide all of these things, you know, you know, everything for you, uh, we're having to pay, it's more private model. So people have to pay for these kind of things and it's, they, they can't afford it for the most part. Well, is there financial support available? There, I mean, we are, they, people have been able to take this as a medical deduction, which is great ever since we've been around, so that's really helpful. And then we can bill out for their counseling services back to them. Uh, we have aid that we give ourselves. We have a fund that we put aside to help fund. Like we just recently had a kid in our Indiana program. We don't do this very often because we can't afford to. But his father died in Iraq or um, Afghanistan just recently. Three other kids in the family. Mom is had him in the program already, and we. We're giving them a full ride this year, which is something that, you know, we would like to do more of if we could. But, you know, you can only do what you can do. It's very expensive to have individual services all the time. Well, since we're in a market economy, <laughs> you know, why don't we talk about good old return on investment? 
How many of your students go on to college and or productive professions? So we are working on, we've been working on those stats. We have some preliminary stats like, you know, something like 75% of them are socially connected after the alumni. After that, and about 55 or 60% are living away from home. Uh, I don't know the exact percent, but many of them are completing their degrees or getting certificates or, you know, uh, and, and doing that and holding jobs. So <coughs> it's, uh, it's if, if, if it's even 50%, that would be huge compared to what is going on. And the problem is recidivism in a sense of, like that effect I said, going back into yourself. When you start to lose out there, it's bad enough to get depression on as a regular person, but when it's sort of built into your brain the way it operates to go inside yourself, it makes it much harder for them to reach out and get the help that they need. So uh, I would say we're doing a pretty good job there. Um, anyone who says that they have like a very high rate of that is lying because it's just <laughs> not true. And they, they, you know, it takes, you can't fix in a year or two, uh, you know, something that's gone on for 20 years or whatever. And sure. And it's a lifetime. That we, the best thing we can do is teach them to be self-learners. And we implant seeds pretty deeply in our curriculum, things like the donkey bowl, which I think you might find as something else in sort of humorous. But I sort of discovered it and made it up, I guess. But we, we teach them a social thinking. To, this is how I've been able to do six programs around the country through the donkey bowl, because my brain is limited. But I use everyone else's brains. So... I'd say to my staff, okay, or whoever, I'm, I get five people that I trust, and I say, if I'm talking about uh, building construction, I'll talk to five people that I know, that, and I'll say, what do you think about this? And then if four of them say, uh, don't do it, you know, it's a horse, basically, and I'm thinking it's a donkey, then I don't, I won't be a jackass, I'm gonna do what, <laughs> I'm gonna do what they do, and that's my only expert, I hope we have a drop here. Today. I think the FCC will let us yeah. get away with that one. <laughs> <laughs> if you're just joining us, you're listening to Well Talk, the show about your health, fitness, and wellness. I'm your host, Avi Dresner, and my guest today is Doctor of Education, Michael McManman, founder of the College Internship Program, which offers comprehensive college and career programs for young adults with Asperger's, ADHD, and other learning differences. If you've got a question for him, the number to call here at the station is 413-528-0860. That's 413-528-0860. The email to type is avi, A-V-I, at welltalkradio.com. But please do so quickly as we are almost out of time. And Dr. McMahon, before we go, any final thoughts that you have? Oh, I could, I could talk forever. <laughs> but... Uh, I do have a book out. It's called Made for Good Purpose through Jessica Kingsley Publishers. It's, it's really written for a, a niche market of people um, who are professionals or parents or grandparents or whatever of kids on the spectrum and, you know, with learning differences. And it's the, like, the main areas that they should be looking at to help them in adolescence and uh, all the areas of, of our curriculum, basically what it is. And it's all through stories. Like some of them I've mentioned already, I didn't really talk too many stories here. But the whole book is my stories and student stories of success and failure and what the thinking is behind it. So I've had people like grandmas who of kids that say, hey, I understand my grandson now. Or, and so it's very heartening to me that it, for the people that I really wanted to write it for, it's having the kind of impact that it needs to have, which is great. And that's really what I intended it for. And the name of the book again? Made for Good Purpose. They Made should Google that Okay, great. Unfortunately, we are out of time. I really want to thank today's guest, Doctor of Education, Michael McManman, founder of the College Internship Program, which offers comprehensive college and career programs for young adults with Asperger's, ADHD, and other learning differences. You can learn more about him at welltalkradio.com. But Dr. McManman, where can people get in touch with you and learn more about CIP? Well, basically, if they go through the website, collegeinternshipprogram.com, they can somehow get to me that way. That would be the easiest. And then we can have our little meeting about your diagnosis afterwards, right? Absolutely. As soon as these mics go dead, you and I are going to sit down and talk. <laughs> and if you want to get in touch with me, your host, Avi Dresner, you can email me at avi, that's A-V-I, at welltalkradio.com. If there's a health, fitness, or wellness topic you want to learn more about on the show, a guest you think I should have, or you'd like to sponsor a future show on Well Talk or advertise on it, or you know someone who would, feel free to write me at that email address or call me at the contact number you see there. 